You know, I hate to be dismal, but I'm going to have to just put out an open casting call for anyone who wants to be my wife right now because you, we can elope, baby girl, like while we still have a chance <laughs> before, before Amy Cucamonga like stops us. Welcome to Keep It, cricket media show about pop culture and politics and what happens when they smack into each other at an alarming speed. I'm your host, Ira Madison III, a television writer and Fallout Boy fan. I'm Louis Fertel. I'm a TV writer and Jane Fonda historian. And I'm Aida Osman. I'm a TV writer and alleged comedian. Let's get into it. I hate when Mike keep it are political only because other people are, shall we say, more eloquent about this. You need me to talk about whatever, the 1979 Oscars. That's what we should be, you know, <laughs> uh, restoring our own sanity by uh, getting into our niche uh, obsessions again and again. But unfortunately, the other day, I was acquainted with Amy Cody Barrett's resume. And <laughs> I'm aware she's, she was underqualified anyway. I know they've rushed her through. I know Mitch McConnell, who is like gutting to throw her through the system, whatever. Bitch. Finally, <laughs> MSNBC put up her experience, and I'm simply blown away. Here we go. Two years in <laughs> private practice, never tried a case, never argued an appeal, never argued before the Supreme Court. Most private work involves civil cases and criminal cases. 15 years teaching experience. Never served as a judge until 2017. 70 <laughs> words per minute, PowerPoint, <laughs> Excel, and Word. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the objective lack of experience, the objective shittiness of this is just unfathomable. And I don't know what to say other than it is excruciating what happened this week that she is on the Supreme Court and what else is there to be said about it? I, I, I feel horrible. I, I, can we just get into our feelings? I feel like shit. That's it. I, <laughs> I compared her to old girl Abigail Fisher who was suing for racial discrimination. Uh, she hated affirmative action so she can get into college. Remember that girl? Yeah, uh, right, this right, is right. like This is like her all grown up. It is honestly embarrassing to me um, the concept of accepting a job, accepting this nomination, getting on the fucking Supreme Court in the midst of a pandemic when like 225,000 people and counting are dead, when um, we're in the middle of an election and, and like over 60 million people have voted already and... You are so underqualified, and it's being called the darkest day in history, you getting on the Supreme Court, and people keep talking about how, like, underhanded the Republicans had to be to get you on the court, too. Like, I would mm -hmm. be fucking embarrassed. And the fact that she isn't makes her even more despicable. Like, standing I there, like, you know, whimsical, and, like, I remember during her hearing, uh, I forget which, like, fucking old white man senator asked her um who does the the laundry at your house <laughs> and one last question hope it's an easy one <laughs> it is i'm I, it's it's a sincere question i'm generally curious who does the laundry in your house <laughs> shut the fuck up i hate that the thought goes into my mind to Wonder if they have shame at all, just because it's not a productive thought, whatever. They have shame, they don't have shame, they're not going to show it. And I don't know why it would be satisfying to me one way or the other if they did. But it is just preoccupying how unbelievably bad this is, and what a joke she is, and what a troll selection she is. Mm -hmm. So, um, sorry about that. Normally I would have, it, it's fall, I would normally do my little fall sucks or hocus pocus sucks thing right now, but you know what sucks? Most other things at the moment. So yeah. I'll get back to that soon, but uh, sorry guys. <laughs> you know, the only good thing about this is that the, the voices we really need on the left right now, like AOC, you know, and like Ed Markey, uh, like Brian Schatz, like the people who actually got up there um, and we're like, fuck this. This is illegitimate. Um, you're, 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 you're evil. Ed Markey was like, uh, I fell out what he said to Amy um, Barrett, um, who is an originalist, quote unquote originalist. These people who interpret the Constitution uh, as it was originally conceived, you know, when niggas were slaves. 
uh, <laughs> when um, women didn't have rights, uh, couldn't even vote, um, is bullshit. And he was like, for originalists like Judge Barrett, LGBT stands for let's go back in time. I was like, Marky got bars. <laughs> and, and AOC is like expand the court I'm like yes bitch let's mm -hmm. expand the court new supreme court who did <laughs> we're expanded I'm like yeah. I don't even want any of this um, hemming and hawing bullshit anymore from people who are like Oh, you know, like if we, we, we really shouldn't play the games that they play. Like Mitch McConnell is on the Senate floor talking about how the Democrats are mad because they didn't win an election. Like they weren't successful and now we get to no do whatever we want to do. You're grifters and you're trash. And I can't wait till we vote every single fucking one of them out. The hypocrisy from the GOP is like they're guaranteed that they're not going to have a Supreme Court justice come in a week before the fucking election when Obama was trying to get Merrick Garland in, RIP Merrick Garland. He's not dead, but we're all about to be without him. So like, oh, you know, I hate to be dismal, but I'm gonna have to just put out an open casting call for anyone who wants to be my wife right now because you, we can elope, baby girl, like while we still have a chance <laughs> before, before Amy Cucamonga like stops us. So I'm just saying, like, hit me anyone up. Anyone in Amsterdam who wants to get yes. married to me, I would love to move there. Yeah. My DMs I'm are open on Instagram. Instagram, not Twitter. <laughs> gotta, gotta see what you look like. Um, yes. But I won't be that discerning, okay? Lewis had to take off after that. So yeah. it's just you want to have a job. You, you want to you you make money and shit. Get out of here. It's just, me, it's just me and you, Aida. Okay, Ira, Ira, Ira. What is your keep it? My keep it is to this meerkat looking bitch. <laughs> Jared Kushner, who had the nerve to go on Fox this week and talk about, you know, like how much uh, his father-in-law cares about black people, right? You know, they're always like, Trump loves y'all. He loves the blacks. This time, however, Jared Kushner said he can't want more for black people than black people want for themselves. So... <laughs> One thing we've seen in a lot of the, 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 the black community, which is mostly Democrat, is that uh, President Trump's policies are the policies that can help people break out of the problems that they're complaining about, but he can't want them to be successful more than they want to be successful. Basically, he was like, niggas is lazy. You know? You got to be like, you got to get like me, bitch, i.e. <laughs> Jared Kushner, a rich kid uh, whose parents donated money to like Cornell and Princeton and also Harvard to get him up in there. You know, Jared Kushner, slumlord Jared Kushner, Jared Kushner, who has no fucking business being at doing anything in the White House. And it's only there because he's booed up with Ivanka. Like you have the nerve to tell black people that they are lazy. What the fuck do you do? What does he do? <laughs> I do not know what this man does besides evict people from his dilapidated houses. <laughs> and comb those three hairs down. I don't have much more to say about this dumb bitch, but just like, fuck you and your lack of qualifications coming out here trying to tell black people that we're lazy. It's such a like superficial view of black people to not understand the depth of the, you know, subjugation and marginalization that we've experienced. And also, yeah, like you're saying, you're, his mom is a free and not caught Felicity Huffman, pretty much in the way that, you know, you had all <laughs> these things set up for you and you get to just look like that and, you know, critique free and, you know, uh, objectivity free. It's. It's His dad went to prison for 18 counts of tax evasion, illegal campaign contributions, and witness tampering. He is vile. This family is vile. And you, you think of like any black person trying to make it ahead if they're um, – father went to jail the way his did like they still have their money they still have their stature uh in new york city you know you're not operating on the same level the black people are operating on and and one every time we try to build some shit like black, black people just need to like pull themselves up by the bootstraps you know like make some money like do some hard work i'm sorry every time we built shit y'all burnt it down <laughs> okay black wall street you know like look it up Mm -hmm. You know, every time black people try to do anything, any success in any town, um, 
post-slavery, post-reconstruction. White people would come in, they would burn it down, they would lynch black people, they would destroy their businesses. So how the fuck are you supposed to be prosperous in American society when they never even gave us that fucking much, you know? Um, talking about reparations. If we had that shit, which is basically what you have because it's money that you inherited from doing nothing, Mm-hmm. maybe we'd be on an even playing field. And let's not talk about the fact that black culture is the dominant culture. Music, fashion, literature, anything. You know, it's like they take our words, they take our vibes, they take what we're dropping, and then they mix it up and put a like fucking white wig on it. It's just like, bring it on. Yeah, they, <laughs> you take, know? they take like what we're done with. They take what literally expired black culture and then make it, you know, the global phenomenon. So Kanye West showed up on Joe Rogan Oof. to do what he calls an interview. Um, the mental fucking gymnastics I had to do to understand what this man calls quote unquote English. Like after watching that, I'm sponsored by Excedrin. My liver does not thank me. Like I'm <laughs> in so much fucking pain. There goes Kanye, you know, in his little oversized sweatshirt, which is just a muumuu. Nigga, call it a muumuu. You in an earth tone sleep shirt is what you're wearing. And you in a dusty Yeezy muumus. Yeezy muumus. Yes. <laughs> trying to have opinions. And don't get me wrong. Like, Kanye really entertains me. I always be on here harping about how much he irritates me. But he's, I appreciate his musings in the way that, like, I like to watch my drunk uncle, you know, talk like wax poetic after like a week of night school you know what i mean <laughs> like, yeah. like like yeah you're right unk you are a genius with that psych 101 information read me psychoanalyze me that's like exactly the type of energy that kanye has and i'm so tired of kanye thinking that he's a revolutionary like nigga you make foam shoes you make crocs for robots bro I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but he has all of these things to say about how black people shouldn't be happy about Black History Month. We shouldn't have to have a special box, a special month, because also what they show in Black Black History Month is us getting hosed down, reminding us that we were slaves. Like, what if we had, remember when I cheated on you month? Like, remember when you first found the, found the text messages? Remember, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel depleted okay 2004 as read about the world like we get it it's the shortest month of the year it's in the dead of winter it's the month where people celebrate love like yuck like we are given crumbs and we know that you're not being transformative by telling us that it's just so frustrating and kanye like recently in that in that interview he reveals that the only reason he registered so late for his presidential bid was because he had covid Mm. Nigga, did you have COVID for eight months? <laughs> like a year and a half? What was going on? You were patient zero. <laughs> and a lot of this anger is really spilling over because I'm super mad about what he said about abortion. And like, as we recall, when Kanye was on his presidential campaign and he came out to talk about how he almost killed his daughter and he started crying because he probably tried to encourage Kim to get an abortion. And then he goes on to talk about how the uh, abortion opinion is in the hands of 31 to 37 year old men who don't want to live a lifestyle because America has coaxed them into believing that they need to be capitalists and all of that. And they encourage their partners to get abortions. And now he's super Christian again and he's pro-life. I mean, he's always been Christian, but now he's openly pro-life and by virtue of that anti-abortion and it's like you don't get to talk about abortion without talking about women's bodies and in this two and a half hour interview kanye west says a million words and joe rogan says like six of them because kanye does that thing where he just thinks he's talking in colors and saying all of these beautiful lyrical things and it's like nigga what you're doing is you're not making sense like you're not making any sense so frustrating. And Kanye, he does say some interesting things. Like he's working on a sustainable monastery. He's working on sustainable food. He had a few good talking points. But overall, it's like, bro, what is happening? What is happening? You know, I was up in New York minding my business. And then I saw just I kept seeing news reports of Kanye, Joe Rogan experience. And I was like, I, I, that's what I'm not going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had I have never to listened to the Joe Rogan experience anyway. I certainly wasn't going to start with this episode.